What's up everybody? <laughs> Wanted to make a video about faith and the reasonableness, the rational side of faith. Uh, normally my slides are on the big screen and I'm on a little itty bitty box on the bottom corner and everything like that. But today I'm going to put me on the big screen and the slides on a little itty bitty box up here and in the black bar over there to the left or right, however you're seeing this video. Uh, when I'm watching videos, I like seeing people's movements, their interactions, or everything. So I think it makes it more personal. Uh, I'm brought more into the video and everything. So I just figured you'd get more of me and, and less of the slide. But you don't need big slides for today's uh, video. So if you know anything about the new atheist movement that's been around for a few years, these are the atheists that are very confrontational. They very much have a dislike and a disdain for Christians, for Christianity, for God, and just everything. Nowadays, we have false teachers, we have critics, we have skeptics, we have naysayers. We just have everything. Uh, people that undermine our faith, people that go ahead and mock our faith, people that just are willingly refusing to listen to the evidence of our faith. And so I hope this video will go ahead and encourage you, strengthen you in your faith. Uh, if you don't believe in God, at least maybe this video will show you that there is reason to believe in God, a creator, and Jesus Christ. And so I just hope and pray that this video could be used on either side of that spectrum. Okay, But for today, I want to go ahead and use an illustration that I read out of J. Warner Wallace's book, Cold Case Christianity. Uh, J. Warner Ra Wallace was a convert to Christianity. Uh, he was a homicide detective. And basically, when he would go into a crime scene, he would have his different investigative methods to try to determine who the killer was. And so J. Warner Wallace talks about those investigative methods, the checklist, if you will, and how he used those same methods to look at the rationality of faith, of God, of Christianity. And through his methods, he ended up becoming a Christian, uh, believing in uh, Jesus Christ for salvation because of the evidence that he uh, willingly saw uh, because it was just presented there in front of him. Now, this is similar to Lee Strobel in Case for Christ, Case for Faith, Case for a Creator, uh, and everything in the fact that Lee Strobel took a journalistic investigative approach to find faith. No matter how one comes to faith, the big important thing is that somebody comes to faith. That they realize there's a God out there that loves you. There's a Jesus out there that died for you. And that his bloodshed on the cross and his resurrection on the third day guarantees your eternal life and your resurrection uh, forever, for eternity. And so I hope and pray that's you. If not, maybe this video will give you some... Uh, just planting that gospel seed in your mind, allow it to just flourish and get watered and increase. And maybe you end up becoming a Christian through this video. So I don't know. I hope and pray so. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up this slide. Uh, hopefully I'm going to try to get my uh, ugly mug off of there real quick. So as you can tell, I'm not entirely professional with all this. So, but that's okay. So. I want to go ahead and use illustration, like I said, from J. Warner Wallace's Code Case Christianity. And through these illustrations, I want you to be able to see that the Christian faith, belief in a God is very reasonable and very rational. Okay, so we're going to look at two murder cases. The first murder case we have here, somebody phones you. You get a phone call and this individual says, hey, I just seen somebody. There's this guy that got shot and he got killed and he's murdered. And I saw the guy shoot him with a 50 caliber uh, Magnum Research Desert Eagle. And I know the guy. The guy's name is Marvin Muckduck. Okay? What do we have evidential wise to go ahead and convict Marvin Muckduck? Well, we have an eyewitness. Because this eyewitness not only saw Marvin Muckduck shoot the guy and kill the guy, he saw him right away uh, in his Camaro IROC. We have enough direct evidence to convict Marvin Muckduck of murder. Okay, so first direct evidence. Uh, that's being a first-hand witness to a scene. If you go ahead and know, clear as day. Once you piece all these together and you make sure and you understand that the caller is not lying or making it up, but everything he says lines up, and he's even got a name and a positive ID on the guy. 
that is direct evidence as first-hand witness account to go ahead and convict the individual of murder hopefully there's no Marvin Muckduck really out there but if so that's a pretty cool name so I just want to show you the investigative method for direct evidence to go ahead and convict somebody okay now let's change it a little bit okay let's say you get a phone call individual call says I just seen somebody get shot it looks like the guy's dead I saw a gun it looked like a really big gun maybe a Magnum Research Desert Eagle I didn't get a good clear look at the guy I saw what he was wearing a gray hat a trench coat with some brown boots I just saw him run away he got into a white Camaro IROC I don't know what year it was but I know it was an IROC because the decals on the side I have no idea who this guy is but these are the different pieces of evidence that we can use to find this killer okay based on this situation we have the gun we have the hat the coat the boots and the car okay we can use these pieces of evidence uh, that the caller has seen we don't know who the guy is we don't know the name we don't really know anything we know the general build and the general characteristics okay so you got this information a day or two goes by and you get no leads but wait you get a break in the case you put this out this information out that we're looking for a murderer we're looking for a killer with general characteristics like this where we got a bolo out on a white IROC Camaro okay so all of a sudden someone calls in and says hey I see this guy He's washing a white IROC Camaro he's got the same general build six foot guy so you have a little bit of evidence to go ahead and get a warrant possibly arrest him as a suspect in a murder there's not many IROC Camaros around especially white ones okay so you find a white IROC Camaro you have a guy that fits the general build characteristics of what the caller said look like the guy ran away and so you got a warrant you go to this guy's house in his closet you find this hat the trench coat and the boots the shoes that match what the caller has identified when he originally caught in this murder but you see no blood on any of this what you do find is chemical agents so the individual bleached this uh, the clothes and everything possibly to remove the blood then you find this big gun Remember, the caller called in and said, I saw a big gun. I don't know. It may have been a Desert Eagle. Lo and behold, you found a Desert Eagle in this guy's house. So you question the guy and he gives you an alibi. No, I was over at my mother's house, whatever the case was. But then you check out his alibi and it doesn't line up. It's a complete lie. And so you go ahead and arrest this guy. Now, do you think there's enough evidence to convict him? Now, that's the question. You can piece together all these different things. You got a white Camaro IROC. You have a guy that fits the general build. You don't know the guy's name. You may not even know the skin color, but you found a white Camaro. You found the same gun that the caller reported. You found the clothes, the gray hat, the brown trench coat, and the brown shoes. Could it be coincidence that there is another guy that fits all this criteria? It's possible. But it is highly unlikely it is actually unreasonable to believe that another person would fit all these characteristics all these different evidential pieces of evidence in this crime scene so you have enough to convict this individual based on circumstantial or indirect evidence is what it's called this is what Jane Warner Wallace points out as a homicide detective that you have some cases with direct evidence direct uh with first-hand witness but then you have some cases you don't have a first-hand witness you don't have direct evidence but you piece together enough details from what the caller phoned in to have circumstantial evidence or indirect evidence to convict the guy this is exactly the case with the scott peterson trial a few years back when he had murdered his wife uh, a matter of fact when you go to the next slide in legal dictionary talking about circumstantial evidence it was that it was circumstantial indirect evidence that ended up 
convicting Scott Peterson of this murder. It included the inconsistencies in his stories, his admitted affair with another individual, the fact that he sold Lacey's car after she disappeared and had expressed an interest in selling a house right away, a six inch long dark hair found on a pair of pliers located in his boat. Says there are, though the defense attorney attempted to explain away every piece of circumstantial evidence, the jury convicted Peterson and believed that there was enough evidence there to convict him and he is currently waiting execution uh, in San Quentin prison. So you have accounts of this circumstantial evidence, indirect evidence being used in criminal uh, courtrooms to convict people of murder. Now, is there direct first-hand account of God or origins? No, there's not. But there is plenty, plenty of circumstantial evidence uh, to see a creator, to see a God. And so that I want you to just understand that though we may not have direct evidence of God, we have plenty of circumstantial evidence to see the aspect of a creator, of a God. I'm going to read just a couple of things off the notes that I made on my phone and everything, but you have circumstantial evidence with the universe, with the, the uh, universe having a cause, that the universe cannot come of itself. Okay, you can look at the white hole theory, oscillating universe, big bang, big crunch, and all these other theories that secular scientists want to make up. But at the end of the day, you always come back to that question. Where did that come from? Where did that come from? There has to be some first cause or else some being transcendent outside of that first cause that created everything. Then when you look at the fine tuning of the universe, you look at specified complexity. You look at just a strand of DNA and how much information a strand of DNA has built inside of it. You look at the seed, how a seed, a tiny seed, is programmed to germinate. How it's programmed for the roots to go down in the dirt and then for it to sprout above and reach up and try to stretch out to get the sunlight and the nourishment that it needs. You find the atmosphere that the earth was created with. You see the magnetic field and the necessity of it. You see the fact that we are still unable to find life on any other planet because this one is unique. If you look at all nine planets in the universe, in the solar system, universe, in the solar system, and yes, I still count Pluto as a planet. If you look at all nine, put them side by side. Not one of those planets comes remotely similar close to Earth. We were made distinct and unique. You look at the tilt of the Earth on the 23 degree axis and how it's necessitated for the seasons any less any more than we wouldn't have the seasons we would have a dry barren uh, side over here we had a frigid ice uh, side over there you look at scientific natural laws the law of gravity you look at the law of biogenesis or abiogenesis things cannot just spontaneously come into existence you look at uh, just the breathing cycles you look at the second law of thermodynamics you look at the conservation of energy and then you can even look at just morality as a whole. Where does morality come from? Either morality is objective or subjective. If you believe that there is no moral lawgiver, then you believe that morality is subjective. That there is no basis for anybody to say this is right or that is wrong. That it is all right in their own eyes. But if you believe in objective morality, then it's not cultural, it's not built upon society and upbringing experience, that if you believe in objective morality, you believe in objective moral law giver. Uh, is it possible that the Big Bang could have created everything? I wasn't there and you weren't there. It is very unreasonable to believe that the Big Bang or the universe created everything out of nothing, that in the beginning nothing and nothing exploded and created everything. That is unreasonable. When we look at creation and we look at everything around us, there is plenty of circumstantial evidence, plenty of indirect evidence to make faith in God definitely reasonable and rational and something that you could put your hope and trust in 
or if you don't believe in God, something that you should really seriously consider and meditate upon to think, is this God really true? Is this God really in existence? Hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, if I butchered anything up with my words, let me know. Uh, but I just pray that this would be beneficial. This would be edifying uh, to those out there. And so make it make your foundation firmer and to know that when somebody says faith in God is irrational, faith in God is unreasonable, oh, science disproves God, blah, 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 blah. You can come back with being able to illustrate with direct and indirect evidence. Both are used in the court of law. Both are reasonable facts to put together a crime scene. And just like that, that's a simple, perfect illustration to show that there's plenty of circumstantial evidence to prove a God and a creator for this universe. So I thank you for watching. Don't forget to hit the like, subscribe button, check out the other videos. Uh, let me know in the comments below uh, what you thought, any questions, comments, critiques, or if you want to see anything else. So for next time, I thank you for watching and God bless.